Hello, so again, clearing folders and carrying on with a theme uh, recently in regards to yeah, what's, I'll leave that to the side, but we have uh, just a few important uh, Roman centres. So we had, uh, well, they're all across the Mediterranean world, and for instance, they had uh, uh, ports down in, um, well, uh, where are we? In uh, southern Egypt, and well, you know, that, that, especially around this uh, southern Egypt, where they were doing trade directly to India. So, were, and well, there was trade again up to the British Isles, and well, pretty much every this, you know, you pretty much have if uh, land that was directly controlled by Rome or was it direct trade partnerships or was under that uh, general sphere of influence. But uh, large empire had built a lot of stuff. So we have uh, Leptis Magna in Syria, was a Roman port. Uh, famous Petra, I'm not saying it's Roman, but we from the architecture we'll see that it has that uh, Greco-Roman traces there as well. Uh, Jerash in Jordan, Palmyra in Syria, and a famous uh, Baalbek. But if we begin with uh, Leptis Magna, a uh, very important Roman point, uh, port in Libya, and just you start to see certain themes carrying on. So... Uh, the Romans built with timber as well, so what survives and mud brick, but what survives is the stone, and this is one you know part of this larger city complex at Jerash in sorry uh, Leptis Magna in Libya, and you'll start to see this very telltale Roman signs, but we'll get better view. And so this particular type of column, the acanthus, uh, the Corinthian column, as they're called, col column capital based on the acanthus. Uh, developed by the Greeks, but uh, one of the mainstays of Roman architecture. We, uh, you know, these, again, with the same theme with this Corinthian um, architecture. Also, the, well, some very similar symbols. So we'll see these Medusa. You can see the little snake there coiled underneath her uh, face there. There's a, a style of Corinthian columns there at Leptis Magna. Again, this Medusa, you see with the snake tied underneath her. So it's not just that coily snake all in her hair. Medusa is very important. Uh, you can find her, it's just one of the standards of our uh, symbols. Uh, Medusa or Gorgon versus Athena being this theme that goes through. And so these are, okay, but an interesting point um, as well in Roman design is what we see the filfot or the swastika as it's called. This is another in terms of decoration now even the these are vesica pisces um in there that's the rhombus that's another theme and so these geometric themes which emerge from what's you know sort of got popularity i suppose sacred geometry but euclidean some you know very basic principles uh of geometry of there so that's in libya in leptis magna again the corinthian columns and how these columns are weren't built in drums, but monolithic style, which is not always the case. Uh, Greeks, Romans, other people learnt to build columns in pieces because they survived earthquakes better that way. Single columns would topple over, they couldn't absorb the shock. Uh, that's another one of these standards um, going uh, around. This is from Libya as well. And back to the beginning. Okay, so we have uh, Leptis Magna in uh, Libya, Roman port, and... First, we'll go to Jerash uh, in Jordan, and we'll go there. At, like the Temple of Zeus is one of them there, and again, this was part of a larger complex. It wasn't just a temple sitting on its own. There was avenues. It was a, a city centre, and once more, the Corinthian style architecture, and now the columns are built in multiple pieces. Again, better to you know, the earthquakes in that part of the world. It was just. They learnt how to do this. It was a better system. And again, Corinthian architecture. This is the Temple of Zeus. Again, we see the columns, column capitals, very, you know, that we can clearly, you know, it's pre, uh, post Greek, you know, the Roman period. And again, we know that the Romans built this, so it was not shy about leaving the records. So that's one of the temples in Jordan there, in Jerash, but we also have, uh, uh, temple. But while we're in there, so not too far away from uh, Jerash, there we have Petra. Now what's in... okay, well, think about this place, it's on the edge of a desert, it's a port. So trade and people would be funneled to Leptis Magna. Now the same thing was happening in both Petra, where you had 
uh, desert travellers and the, you know, the famous caravans they would travel through. And it wasn't until they arrived at Petra that they got water and shade. One of the uh, main features of that whole Petra city is these large cisterns which have been dug into the stone to collect water. So we have trade arriving fr from the desert into Petra and then from there into the, you know, the greater Roman world. And we have the same thing happening with uh, Jerash in Jordan once again, where again it would be a, a funnel for trade, which is, well, the same thing with Palmyra, but uh, we'll first we have a look at Palmyra in Syria, uh, famously, you know, in recent years with that whole war thing going on there, they uh, were a bit of destruction, sometimes destruction of uh, reconstructed ancient artifacts, and but uh, there was also some very serious destruction going on there, but uh, again, but Palmyra was this large city complex, and so okay, each of these individual columns they don't look too much on their own, but as you start to get down and um, closer to them, so again, it's a large city complex, and the, you know you would have also had timber, mud brick, and these other buildings which haven't lasted the test of of time, uh, possibly also a lot of uh, tents because it was a uh, pardon why my computer freezes but just like these other centers we see where it's uh okay so there again we have this side of the avenues and these large columns and these large columns are pretty interesting because once again they're of the corinthian school of architecture with the corinthian capitals which are the most elaborate difficult expensive to build unlike your doric or, or your ionic columns which are much simpler in their design and my computer's not playing with me. Okay, anyway. So, again, now we're in Palmyra, and so we start to see, uh, now again, we have these massive, you know, hundreds of columns, and each piece, each column made up of several pieces, which will fit it uh, very well. And then we have, the, like, once more, the Corinthian capital that is, again, the most elaborate of, to, to carve this stuff, it's the most difficult, you need... You can't just grab any old slave and give him a chisel and say, off you go, make me a Corinthian capital. This is skilled work, and it was done on a massive scale. And so again, we just see a number, just how many of these particular type of uh, columns, and they're very large ones, very heavy. So from the air, from the distance, it doesn't look so much, but just these uh, lintel pieces, and the, again, the capitals on top. And to make, again, these guys were masters of stone. They really knew their stuff. Again, Corinthian capitals and uh, so this yeah R R Rome knew what they were doing though they, they were not some piddly little second-rate school and also we see here well, I won't give away the plant but what we also have is uh, it's a bit difficult to make out there but once again you can start to see the swastika patterns which are built into this particular design um, as well so that, again that matches up with uh, what we saw earlier, it's a standard, you know, throughout Roman temples across the Roman world, you get the Philfot, Swastika, Medusa, and uh, Palnets as well, but I won't go into them here. And so from Palmyra, we'll come down to Baalbek, and where we have the temple of uh, Bacchus. And, well, no, no surprises there. Uh, again, but it, of the Roman temples, uh, this uh, rates as one of the, lar well, the largest by height, uh, or larger ones by size, but again, it's sort of often, some people will even say that this was not Roman, and, and, and yeah, and, and, and connected to uh, lost high technology. And again, it's just not, it's, uh, you know, these guys knew what they were doing, they wrote it down, but once more you'll see this same pattern again. So this is at Baalbek, again, well, Corinthian columns, as far as the eye can see. And again, these big stones, that's often made a big deal of. Uh, well, the Romans were more than capable of do, of moving these. These were only brought from half a mile away. Uh, not even, it's again set uphill, well, not necessarily, could have been downhill. It was essentially flat, so it's, again, that's just a furphy, this up, up, uphill, uphill, no, it's... Uh, a, the worst possible position was slightly downhill, and that's less than a degree, and it could have been two degrees above the final t uh, location. So, but anyway, so this is, again the same patterns. Uh, well, the 
bit of sacred geometry there for you. Now that's the temple of uh, Bacchus there. But also in Baalbek we have the temple of uh, Jupiter. And again, very impressive. Uh, it's impressive, no doubt, but it's not not spectacular or, or special in any way regarding the Roman uh, engineering. Again, Corinthian capitals. Now these are 66 feet high, just these columns, which 66 feet being a very important measure. Uh, the massive uh, up to over 80 tons. The uh, some of these larger, like the um, freezers, the architrave, the, the lintels, the bits running along the top of the column, and we have the same pattern going on there. So these are pretty much your standard Roman columns. Roman columns are essentially the same size as Greek columns. So the Temple of Apollo in Didyma, uh, again, uh, about they're at 64 feet touch over maybe 65 maybe see I, I would think 66 if they do the most act but again uh, Greek columns compared to Roman columns in in the height and the temple size and and beaut the, the beauty of the temples and the and the complexity rivaled Rome um, as well and again just because we know so much about these this particular point in time it becomes necessary for some to uh, diminish it or to even uh, what's the, the uh, appropriate it for for their particular agenda, which is sort of one of these words going around, but it also fits through where people are appropriating or accusing others of appropriating uh, things that don't. Yeah, anyway, but it's, it's part of this greater you know post fact movement where it's all opinions are equal and you know kumbaya and I tell you what you want to hear and you know love me, love me, love me, but if someone is a you know. Says, well, hold on. There's there's a whole bunch more underneath the surface here that you're not taking account for. You're really giving a superficial view. There's more to it. Well, that's not to be rewarded, not to be liked in this uh, current state of affairs. So anyway, that, those are some of the important, some of the important. Now again, you, from Spain all the way across, all the way through here, then all the way around, we find t temples, aqueducts, uh, port facilities. All this stuff built by the uh, Romans who were second to none in cutting and moving stone. And again, that's just not mentioned because it doesn't fit the delusion of the Fosterites. <laughs> anyway, I, you know, I, I can't fit, you know, it really is, come, you know, it is silly um, and, and hypocritical in the same video. It's uh, amazing. Anyway... There's some of the locations, if you, you know, Greek, Roman, Persian history is an excellent uh, area to look in into ancient history because we have some really, really cool records and we and we can know what they what they did before modern technology. And if they could, if the Romans and Greeks could do it, the Egyptians and those who come before could do it as well. So moving stone, cutting stone, what was, you know, it's best to look at the people who, you know, were not using modern technology they are a closer example better uh, comparison to go with the others and well, I, you know, let's su suggest if you're really going to get into Egypt and, and these other civilizations well first you've got to get a handle on what come after them and then you can get a better view that's just my opinion but I like to do things in a certain way and not just make stuff up randomly okay with that hope you enjoyed check out the Roman world it's pretty freaking awesome